Now, this year marks the 30th anniversary of Riding Down the Bones. While you were writing it, did you ever think it would make such an impact? I had no idea. I was just trying to put down, have the courage to put down what I really thought, saw, and felt. You know, and some of the things that I wrote, I shouldn't have needed so much courage. Things like being kind to yourself was revolutionary for a writer. Mm -hmm. You know, now it seems absurd, but at the time I was young, in my 30s, and I had no idea. Except that when I would put up a little sign in the bookstore, I'm going to have a writing group. People signed up, I filled those writing groups immediately, and I saw how much people loved it, and there was a hunger. But that was only in Taos. I didn't know it was going to take off. Mm -hmm. you know, around the, really the world. It's been translated into at least 14 languages. Was there a particular point when you, when you realized that, that people were really picking up on this? That's a good question. You know, no one ever asked me that. I think, you have to understand, I was young, and it was my first book, and you don't know a lot. I did realize I was getting fan letters from factory workers. Um, I was getting fan letters from vice presidents of insurance companies in Florida. I, across the whole margin, not just a certain kind of person, all kinds of people. I, yes, I knew it was taking off, but I was naive. I thought, well, you write a good book, people read it that easy. And I thought that would happen with every one of my books. And my other books have done okay, but nothing like Bones. 30 years later, it still sells 30,000 copies a year. Um, your, this is your first book. Um, why did you choose to write a book about writing when you could have started off writing a lot of different kinds of things? What, was, what went into that process? It's a really good question. I can't think back, but I was a teacher, and I wrote in the public, I was a teacher in the public schools, so I cared about teaching. And I was teaching myself how to write. And I knew I couldn't learn in school, because the way they taught it in school, it didn't catch on for me. And I badly wanted to learn to write. So um, I had to go outside the usual norm in order to figure it out. And certainly Taos helps with that because Taos is outside the norm. <laughs> so I, um, I had to really examine what it is that made a writer. So while I was teaching everyone else, I was teaching myself. Mm -hmm. So in a way, that instruction book was me talking to myself. I think I wasn't just writing it for myself, but I certainly was just full of energy, young energy, to learn how to write and to figure it out. How does Zen practice figure into the practice of writing? The whole, it's my writing down the bones is really based on 2,000 years of watching the mind. If a Zen person reads it, they realize it's pure Zen. I um, studied with a Japanese Zen master for 12 years. And actually, in writing the book, it came together what he was teaching and what I was trying to understand about writing. And I think that's what made it so new. It came from a whole new angle. The idea to make writing your practice. You know, like you practice... Um, running or uh, horseback riding or, you know, anything that you practice on regular way, piano playing. Nobody had ever put those two words together, writing and practice, that you actually practice writing like any other sport and you get better at it. Writing was always put into some other separate realm. You were a writer and it was very artistic and only certain people were hit by it. Well, actually, all it did was mean show up. You know, you have to show up, pick up the pen, and keep doing it. 
So I think that, you know, I learned that from Zen. So the book is really, all it's all integrated. Mm -hmm. What is some of the feedback you've gotten over the years? At least something that really sticks out in your mind. Well, um, there was so many things. Okay, one time I was teaching a, a workshop at uh, up in Vancouver, at an island in Vancouver, and it was the last day, and I saw a woman outside the group, wasn't a student, hanging around, hanging around, and she said, I'll talk to you afterwards, and I was done with the workshop, and um, she came up to me and she said, I just had to meet you, and I said, why? She said, well, I was very, very depressed, and I was going to commit suicide. And she said, I was actually driving, going to drive into the woods. I was prepared. And she said, for some reason, I stopped at the library, and I found your book, and I took it out, and I started reading it, and I read half through nonstop. And I realized it, it she said it woke me up, and I realized... I didn't want to kill myself. And this was a year ago, and she said, I wanted to come and meet you and personally thank you. You saved my life. Now, I wasn't expecting anything like that. I mean, the book is read at funerals. I don't, <laughs> you know, it's gone way beyond anything that this single person could imagine. Now, over the last few years, your artistic side has gradually emerged. Um, when starting a painting, do you follow a similar practice as you're writing? Yeah, I, I really, it's the only thing I know. What I teach in writing down the bones is the only thing I know. So when I paint, it's the same thing. Let's say, I'll, and often, I'm so cheap, I use my, the pen that I write with, and I use a pretty cheap pad, and I'll draw something, and the same rules. If I make a mistake, it's not a mistake. Just keep going. Keep including. Don't stop. Don't cross out. If a color flashes in your mind and you think, well, the sky isn't pink. If it flashes in your mind, grab the pink. Don't think. Keep going. So yeah, I use the same rules for painting. You've written one novel. Yes. Why, Why only one novel? Well, I, because it's hard. <laughs> it's really hard to write a novel, and it's not my natural genre. I'm more interested in the way that mind moves. And a novel is more set up. You have to have a plot, and you have to, if something comes up in chapter three, it has to be carried through to the other chapters. And it's just not my natural mode. I do have an idea for another novel, but I hope I never have to do it. <laughs> it was really hard writing a novel for me. Well, I'm proud of it. It was hard, though. Well, we, we spoke earlier before we began the interview about, um, about how that novel captured a certain essence of Taos. Yes. Um, did that come to you naturally, or was it something that you... It, I was deeply in love with Taos. I mean, Taos, when I wrote that, Taos is really the third character in the novel. It's really a love song to Taos. And actually, um, people have read that book. I'll tell you another story. Um, I was in Taos. I was in a cafe that's not here now. I just had stopped in. And... Um, a woman came up to me, it was a Sunday morning, and she said, are you Natalie Goldberg? And I said, yes. She said, I live in Virginia. I just finished Banana Rose on Friday. I have a full-time job. I had to see Taos. I got in my car, and I drove across the country. I called in that I'm going to be a day late. I came here, I see Taos, and to, now I have to drive back and be in time for work. So she drove across the country to see Taos. So I said, did you see what you wanted? She said, yes, this is like the book. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're here at the Mabel Dodge Luan House, a, a place that you visited frequently many, over many years. 
Um, do you ever feel a, a sense of energy of the of the people who've been to this house? Oh yes, I feel the long lineage. I've taught here for twenty years, and I always tell my students how this house came to be, and that we're walking in a lineage of artists. Georgia O'Keeffe, even Carl Jung was here, Willa Cather, um, Paul Strand, um, Ansel Adams. It's a real lineage here, and you could feel it in the walls. You know, it's, it, it's not a house, it's a being. It's alive. That's a that's an interesting quality. Yeah. That 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 sense of place has almost a, a, a physical character to it. Yes, I agree. I agree. Um, do you have any books coming out? I like that you asked this. Um, <laughs> Tuesday was the publication of the thirtieth anniversary of writing down the bones, and my new book called The Great Spring, writing Zen and this zigzag life. And it's um, 22 personal essays. You know, for the last 30 years, I've been writing books and been very professional. Had to, you know, write a proposal and then write the book. But on the side, I was writing other books. Not other books, essays. Like when I would go hiking, looking for the stone lions and bandolier. I came home and wrote a whole essay about it. But it didn't fit in what I was writing for publication. So I collected all of those essays. There's one about me and my father playing ball when I was eight years old, going to Japan to a monastery. So I've been do collecting them over many years. Um, but a year ago, I had cancer. Mm. And in the afternoons, when I was resting, I put the book together. And I found a lot of the essays in my notebooks. Of course, I think it's my best book. And I think it's linked to writing down the bones. Because in writing down the bones, I tell you what to do. And in this book, I tell you how I did it. How I lived my life back by Zen and writing. So I think they're really linked together. And they came out together on Tuesday. How is your health now? It's good. It's yeah. good. Knock on wood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what what makes the uh, the 30th anniversary edition of Writing Down the Bones special? Um, uh, Julia Cameron, who wrote The Artist's Way, wrote an introduction. And by the way, you know, she used to live in Taos, too. Mm -hmm. And I think she wrote part of her book here. And... Bill Addison, who was a young man who was 21 when he read it, Writing Down the Bones, he wrote an introduction because he used Writing Down the Bones to teach him to become a food critic. And he writes in that essay how Bones informed him and gave him a career. He's quite successful now. He's in his 40s. And then I write a new introduction, too. If you could turn back the clock, is there anything you would have written differently in the book? Probably not, no. That was Natalie in her 30s, enthusiastic, alive, with the whole world ahead of her.